All right, so let's move on to chapter 18. The title of chapter 18 is Activity-Based Costing. Uh, by the time we get through all of these little video presentations, we will cover all of these uh, learning objectives. This first video is mostly going to uh, be centered here on the first objective. So the hardest part of determining product cost is determining the proper amount of overhead to assign to each product, service, or job. We're gonna focus mostly on products and jobs. Uh, I may say this a second time, or a third for that matter, but direct materials, direct labor, these are generally uh, not difficult to um, determine at all, but factory overhead is sometimes very, very difficult. And so the traditional costing uh, methods that we have looked at over the past few chapters uh, are not always going to provide us with information that is accurate enough to be effective as a company. So speaking of traditional costing, um, whether we're talking about traditional costing or activity-based costing, um, the goal is always the same. We want to allocate costs as fairly as possible uh, to each of our products. And if we make one product, we don't ever have to do this. But when we make at least two products, this item right here becomes a bit of a concern. Uh, when management has more accurate costs, better decisions can be made. Of course, that's going to be uh, true. And we've talked about this in the last couple of chapters. But if we think about it, there's, there's no harm in reviewing. It says direct materials and direct labor are easiest to trace through. Material requisitions, we talked about that both with regard to job order costing and process costing. And then payroll timesheets, we really got into that more in the job order costing process. So traditional costing uses a single uh, predetermined overhead rate. I believe all of our examples thus far have either been direct labor hours or machine hours. So let's think about job order costing where there's a high degree of specialization and customization. Direct labor cost is going to be our most relevant activity base. And traditionally, direct labor in pretty much any type of industry was a huge, huge part of overall cost. Um, that is no longer the case. So we can do this, we can still do this, but there has to be a very high correlation between direct labor cost and overhead cost. If there's not, traditional costing will not serve our purposes very well. The same thing can be said with regard to process costing where machine hours has been assumed to be the relevant activity base. And this can still work, again, if machine hours are a uh, major component of total overhead costs. Otherwise, traditional costing may not serve us well in a process costing environment or process manufacturing environment. All right, so it says, why do companies need a new approach? Uh, well, it says there's been tremendous change in manufacturing and service industries. We are gonna, again, focus primarily on manufacturing. As technology has improved, there has been a decrease in the amount of direct labor used. Most industries are not nearly as uh, labor intensive as they were at one time says a significant increase in total overhead costs. Well, let, let, me, let me say this. Overhead costs have been an increasing portion of total costs, largely because direct labor costs have gone down. It says maybe inappropriate to use a single predetermined overhead rate based on either direct labor or machine hours when a lack of correlation exists. Now, that's 
that's pretty cryptic and you may not know what we're talking about just yet, but stick with us and I think this will become clear as we go. A lot of these companies are becoming more and more diversified, more and more complex. We, they don't want to rely on a single one or even two products, so they're Act, their manufacturing processes are consistently refined, products are added and dropped, and this is where this concept of activity-based costing versus traditional costing uh, may be appropriate for a lot of modern manufacturers. So, activity-based costing is another approach other than traditional costing that we've studied so far in allocating overhead. So again, in activity-based costing and traditional costing, direct labor and direct materials are treated the exact same way. The differences only come into play when we start talking about overhead. So we're gonna talk about, and we're gonna get into this here in a little bit, but we're going to start looking at um, allocating overhead costs by way of multiple activity cost pools and multiple cost drivers. This will become clear as we get further into the presentation. So we've got some definitions here. An activity, because we are talking about activity-based costing, is any business uh, action that causes a cost to be incurred. Uh, it says we've got some examples of activity cost pools, overhead costs attributed to a distinct type of activity. They've given us two examples here, purchasing materials, setting up machines. So I want you to understand we're, we're not talking about the cost of the materials. We're, cost, we're talking about the cost of, rec, of, uh, of ordering those uh, materials, procuring those. We're not even talking here about the actual costs associated with running the machines, but we also have some costs involved with just getting the machines ready to go. A lot of these machines require a lot of setup time before they can operate um, at optimal efficiency. And then we have the final definition on the page, cost drivers, it says any factor or activities that have a direct cause effect relationship with resources that have been consumed. So the resources that have been consumed translate into dollar signs, specifically dollar signs related to overhead. Okay, so stick with me. And we're gonna get to some examples. Uh, ABC allocates overhead costs in two stages. Stage one, it says overhead costs are allocated to activity cost pools. We, again, we're going to look at some examples. And number two, these overhead costs are allocated to cost pools um, are assigned to products using the cost drivers that we previously discussed. And we, yeah, so again, should go without saying, but the more complex uh, a company's manufacturing operation is, the more activity uh, pools we're gonna have and the more cost drivers we're likely to identify. So this is a really good slide about overhead costs and we have, we have some departments here. We have a purchasing department, uh, storage, a machining department, and then we have the um, company or the factory supervisors. So these represent activity cost pools. So again, for the year, let's just look at purchasing since it's the first one. The purchasing department has a certain amount of cost through salaries and so forth that they incur on a yearly basis. This total amount of cost is uh, determined or we get there largely due to co a cost driver. So the example they provide us with is the number of purchase orders. So what they're saying here is that as the number of purchase orders goes up, the total activity in the purchasing department goes up and the cost in that department go up as a result 
Ultimately, however, these costs need to be allocated to the product. And we wanna do that as accurately as possible. Storage is another example. Some items are very, very large. Some items are very, very small. Uh, some items are, we have a very, very large back stock. Some items, we have almost no back stock. So again, things become more complicated. Machining might be a major component of certain products and, be, and not be much of a, a component at all of other products, okay? So we've got some examples of activity cost pools and some examples of cost drivers. And you can see, hopefully, you can see that there is a cost, I'm sorry, there is a direct cause and effect relationship between each one of these. All right. Okay. So to keep this video from getting too long, we're going to stop it and then we're going to come back with another one here in just a moment.